Thank you for choosing CTN. And now, it's time with Herman and Sharon. I love you. It's just me today. Sharon is taking the day off. <laughs> She's actually in the studio. But we're on a study set. As you know, you watch Dr. Dave and Herman on Fridays, I hope, on a regular basis. And we're in the Word of God, and I just feel this is more suited for my guest that has a book. Actually, it's a series. It's volumes. It's more than just one. But when I was looking through it and reading through it, I try to, in my producer mind, create some way that I can get this delivered to you. Because if you don't understand what we're talking about, it's a half hour wasted. So I feel that the Lord is directing me more and more to teach people the Word of God, not telling you what I think it says, but actually reading what it says and then carrying that out because the Word of God is inspired by God, inerrant. So if something has that kind of power behind it, let's study it. Let's get to know the Word of God. So that's why I'm directed more and more to use this time to mold people because I don't know how much time I have left on television. You don't know how much time you have left. So let's use this time at the utmost making this second that we're together count for Christ. Because let me tell you something. The Word of God teaches us it's all about Him. It's all about Him. It's not about Herman Bailey. It's not about my guest. It's all about Him. And that's why the Word of God, I just love it. And I want you to fall in love with it. Let me introduce the guest next to me. You're going to see his face. He is a Bible teacher. His name is Glenn M. Koppel. And am I saying that right? That's right. And he is, let me give you a little information on it. He is founder and CEO of the New Hope Gospel Ministries. He is also the associate minister at the Northside Christian Church of North Lake, Florida. His mission is to help people build a more passionate personal and powerful relationship with our Lord Jesus Christ. There he is right there. And I just asked him a little while ago, you can keep on that shot, Dave. I asked him, what is this all about? And you said? This says <coughs> GI for Jesus, which means I'm a soldier for Christ in the army of God. Amen. Amen. Doesn't that make you feel good? And we really are. When we wake up, put on the full armor of Christ so that we can take on what Satan wants to do to us and we have the full armor on so no matter what he tries to do it just bounces off of us that's what we need to do and the only way you know that is through the Word of God so this is your opportunity once again to join in our Bible study you're going to see a lot of writing on the on the screen uh, Glenn is going to read as we put it up on the screen and you will follow along now let, let me just show you what the what the book looks like there's one right there on your screen. You can get copies if you go to that website and make yourself available to receiving what we're going to just kind of touch a little during this time together. So actually his study, believe it or not, once you get into this, it's a three year, right? Jesus ministry was three years. I made Walking with Jesus a three-year Bible study so we could do just like the apostles. Go from beginning to end and see everything that Jesus taught and did and see how it applies to our lives today. You know, today we want instant gratification. Mm -hmm. I, that's the society we live in. Fast food fix. Yes. And when I, when I read this, that it's a three-year time of your life, you will not be the same person at the end of that three years. You will, not, you will not be the same person 
And that's what is so valuable when we get into the Word of God. Mm -hmm. So David, my producer, put the passages up on the screen and we're going to walk through. It's called Walking with Jesus. So there it is, Walking with Jesus. And, and you, th these are from your book, so you can yeah. read them, uh, Glenn. Jesus is tempted by the devil. Now explain why you want that and why that is kind of a, a setup for the rest of the program. Well, there's one thing I've learned as I've gone through the life and teaching of Jesus from childhood to today. There is nothing that we are experiencing in our life that Jesus has not experienced. We all experience temptation. So here's an opportunity to see how Jesus handled temptation. So the next time you and I are tempted, probably before the day is over, we'll say, well, Jesus would have done this. I can do this. And I don't have to give in to that temptation. I've got the power to tell the devil Amen. where to go. Amen. Amen. Okay, let's go, let's go to the screen. Uh, re read these for us because how to defeat temptation. Now, keep in mind, you'll see at, the, at the, our little desk here that we're sitting at, all of the volumes that are made available to you. And later on, we'll kind of highlight that. But if you had a, get a glimpse of it, that's why all those books are stacked up on this desk to give you an idea of how many opportunities you have to study the Word of God. Read that for us, uh, Glenn. How to Feed Temptation. The most challenging or dramatic event you have ever experienced. Has there ever been a time after which you needed some time alone to think about it? Evidently, Jesus' immersion inaugurated something very big. Jesus wants some time alone to ponder what lies before him. How much of his future did he know during his childhood? And how and early adult years, and how much is revealed on a need-to-know basis. We're going to be in Matthew chapter 4, verses 1 through 11, Mark chapter 1, verses 12 and 13, or Luke chapter 4, now keep verses that on, 2 through 13. Keep that on, Dave, because I want you to have time to write, because all of this information, you need to go to the Scripture and understand so that what he just said to you you will understand why he said that. If you go to Matthew 4, 1 through 11, write that down, and then you go to Mark 1, 12 through 13, write that down. I can hear you writing. And Luke 4, 2 through 13. Go to those scriptures. Read them. Let the word of God speak to you. Let's continue. Jesus seeks time with God. Matthew chapter 4, 1 and Mark 1, 12 and Luke 4, 1. Jesus' baptism was a moving experience. Now he wants some time with with God. Matthew and Luke say the Holy Spirit led. But Mark says that the Holy Spirit drove with power Jesus into the wilderness. God now prepares Jesus for what is ahead. This is a time for Jesus to commune with God without interruption. It's very intense. He is also deeply consumed in prayer that he doesn't even bother to eat. Actually, this was a deliberate fast so he could entreat God to know his complete will and make a commitment to carry it all out. Now, don't forget, I'm going to give it to you again. Matthew 4, 1. Write that passage down. Mark 1, 12. Write that passage down. Luke 4, 1. Write that down. Go back to those later on today. Read them. And what Glenn just said will make all the sense in the world to you. Let's continue. Jesus is tempted by the devil. Matthew 4, 2. Mark 1, 13. And Luke 4, 2. At the end of 40 days... While Jesus was still in the wilderness, Satan seizes the opportunity to try to capitalize on the humanity of Jesus and see if he can be tempted in a time of weakness. Wow. Dave, come back to me if you would. This series you have put together, give me your background, your mom and dad, how you were saved, 
What motivated you to do all of this? Let's find out about Glenn. Well, I can say by the grace of God that I was born and raised going to church. I have had the privilege of knowing Jesus since I was this size. Accepted Christ when I was 11, was baptized into Christ. In high school, I realized that I, I thought I had secular interests at the time, but our preacher had said every young person ought to take at least one year of Bible college. So I went off to Bible college for a year, ended up being a year and a half. Then I pursued secular interest. And while I was working on my secular degree, I was preaching at my home church in Osage City, Kansas. And after working in the secular world for a little bit, I wasn't happy. And I just felt God leading me to go into the ministry. Now, while I was in a ministry in California, I taught through the life of Christ using a harmony of the Gospels. It took me three years to do it. I did that again and, and again. It took me three years to do it. And I just felt something burning in here to write a Bible study on every event in the life and teachings of Jesus that takes three years to complete. And so I started putting Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John together in a harmony of the Gospels, breaking it up into sections. Ended up with 160 lessons on every event in the life of Christ. I put that into these six volumes and now I've got a Bible study where we can go in and see how we can become more like Jesus. Now, individuals could use this in their churches. This is designed for, it can be done by small groups, great for a Sunday school class or a midweek Bible study, or I've got individuals that are just doing it on their own. This, and I don't know if you can get a shot, Dave, of the, of the volumes that are right on the end of the table there, but how many volumes are there? There are six volumes in the series. There so it is. Good. every six months you would go to the next book in the series if you want to continue on. And in three years, just a little over three years, you'll have gone completely through every event in the life of Christ. And you, you, it's going to change you from the inside out. Absolutely. You, you, you may not be overt change, but it's going to be subtle and it's going to be powerful. Comments that you have heard, individuals that have actually accomplished the three years. One uh, uh, friend that's uh, got his doctorate degree compares this to J.W. McGarvey's Fourfold Gospel, only this is better. Now that's his words, not mine. Uh, I've had a lot of, a number of people that have read through the lessons and just really been impressed and touched by the, the level of how they're written, how they're applicable to small groups, ready to, ready to use. You don't have to spend a lot of time preparing. Yeah, it's, 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 user-friendly because you can actually, I know myself looking through it, it's not something you're going to have to pull out this and I'll use this or write this outline. It's already done for you. So it's, it's an opportunity for you. Maybe you've had this desire to compel others because you love the Word of God so much to join you in that love. That would be wonderful. And this is a tool that is already made, ready made by somebody that, I mean, somebody had to, you know, come up with all of the printing. <laughs> I mean, somebody had to come up with the finances to make this happen. Somebody had to put all this together because every time I see something like this, I think, okay, if the Lord said, Herman, this is what I'd like you to do. And, I, I, and in, in my mind, I, I kind of lay it out kind of a, a, you know, like you would a architect and you see the, all of the different structures of the building and everything and I've got to do this and this and this. And then you look at that and you go, how am I going to get this done? Because you have to start with chapter one and then go all the way through. And then, and then, and then I've got it. And that's right. And then you check out how much it's going to cost you and how much uh, uh, you're going to have people proofread and all everything that goes into this kind of thing. And you would say, great idea, Herman. I think I'll just put that idea over here. Well, here's somebody that actually did it. So Dave, let's go back to the screen. I just wanted you to enjoy the person and how God has used the person to do exactly what we're doing today and make yourself available to this opportunity of getting to know the Word of God and then passing that Word on to someone else as you teach them. Read this. Jesus being tempted presupposes that he could actually say yes to the temptation. The very definition of the word presupposes vulnerability of the one being tempted. Of course, if Jesus had 
then he would not have been sinless and would not be able to be, we would not be able to be saved. But the fact that Jesus said no to the temptation as a human places greater responsibility on us to likewise say no Amen. when we are tempted. We can't excuse it as being human. Satan likes to tempt us in private. He says, no one will know. Next. Yeah. Let's look at three areas of temptation. Each focuses on a different aspect of our nature. Page 206 in Walking with Jesus, Volume 1, has a comparison of Jesus' temptations and the tempting of Eve. Physically, Matthew chapter 4, verses 3 and 4, and Luke chapter 4, verses 3 and 4, make the stones into bread. This is a promotion of situation ethics. It is justified if the situation justifies it, regardless whether it's right or wrong. Satan knows that Jesus is very hungry. They both also know that Jesus better eat soon or he will die of starvation. Jesus has lost a lot of weight and probably didn't have that much to lose. Now again, write down Matthew 4, 3 through 4, Luke 4, 3 through 4. Write those down so that what is being said will be confirmed later today as you read those passages. Let's continue. Now, bread is still only temporary. We need God's spiritual nourishment much more than we need more bread. We often use situation ex ethics to justify traffic violations, stealing from our employer, etc. Wrong is still wrong even if others are doing worse things. Jesus replies to Satan by quoting scripture and citing God as his authority. Who's going to be your authority? Are you going to repent and stop trying to justify your wrong behavior? Next. Now, Jesus was tempted mentally. Matthew chapter 4, verses 5 through 7. Luke chapter 4, verses 9 through 12. Just hold that for a minute, Dave, and, 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 and just keep that on the screen. Can you give us what that actually meant? We know mentally, but he was very man very God. Why did you use that as a PowerPoint? Well, partially because of our three natures. We are physical, mental, and spiritual. And so our thoughts, of course, that's where a lot of our temptation comes from, is, is those things in our mind. I'm not good enough, or, or nobody will see me doing this, or uh, it, it's okay because other people are doing that. These little mind games we play with ourselves to try to justify our wrong behavior. Jesus was tempted to play those mind games with himself too. Read the rest of it. Satan transports. Satan transports Jesus to Jerusalem and challenges him to take a flying leap off the pinnacle of the temple. Instantly, or by foot, we don't know. If it was the temple building, that's a 60-foot jump. Both of them know that Jesus is God's son. Here Satan is challenging Jesus to display his power by flying off the temple. This would be, prove that he is more than a mere human being. Satan even misquotes scripture to try to fool Jesus into thinking that he would be justified to jump off and let the angels catch him. Uh, Jesus knows the scripture better than Satan, and he corrects his out-of-context comment. Wow. Dave, come back to Glenn for a moment, and, and then you can put that up on as soon as you... But what does that say to you as, as a understander, understanding God's Word, studying God's Word, what does that tell Glenn? It tells me I better be careful what I fill my mind with. I better be careful what I spend my time reading, looking at, doing, listening to. If I surround myself with people that do worldly things, peer pressure is going to wipe in there and I'm going to say, oh, I got to be like them or else they won't like me. That's a mental temptation. Are we looking at pornography or, or sexual immorality? We're being mentally tempted to do something that would be contrary to what God's Word teaches, what's best for us. I just read that 65% of people in Christian work view pornography once a day. 
I've heard similar numbers. 65 percent. And that is very, how can we witness for Christ and be an example for Jesus when we're doing what the world's doing? We want Jesus to change our lives. We want to be aware. I'm being tempted right now, and I don't want this on my computer. If I were to die today, and you go home and look at my computer, and you say, oh, Glenn's been looking at pornography. I don't want that in my history. And I guarantee you, anything you've been looking at your, at your computer, at home, at work, or wherever, is recorded on a server somewhere. You know, it's amazing you should say that, because this is, this is actually from a true story many years ago, so you can't figure out when it was, who it was. But this well-known man, mm -hmm. well-known, on television, <clears throat> a guy that I knew that knew him so well, he passed away. And he said, I need to go in by myself and clean up the area that he lived in, which was a gorgeous place. And he told me later what he found. And he said, I am so glad that I went in and tried to clean up as much, which, which no one else would have known. He knew the places, knew the places that he might keep this stuff. So, so I said, oh my goodness. I said, thank you that that didn't go into the minds of the people that went in, you know, to clean the place and get it ready yeah. for, for sale and so forth. But just what you said. That's why we need to, every day, we have no idea when we're going to leave this earth. That's and right. what are you going to leave behind you? Other people Great information. Watching. Let's go back to the screen, Dave. Have you ever altered God's Word to suit your circumstances? I think we've got a world of that going on today. Have you ever tried to justify a feeling or a belief with Scripture? Uh, always check the context of the Scripture before you go quoting it. Wow. Because a lot of people have quoted it out of context. And you see that on Christian television all the time. Next. Jesus was tempted spiritually. Matthew chapter 4, verses 8 through 11, and Luke chapter 4, verses 5 through 8, and verse 13. Write those down. This will be a good time while he's reading this to write those passages down. Use them. Read them later on today. Worship me, and I will give you the whole world. Satan directly challenges Jesus' relationship to God. Jesus knows that he is supposed to be the king of the Jews and that his kingdom will include the whole world. And Satan offers him a chance to make it happen now. Wow. Now remember, as we're reading this, the volumes have these quotes in them. So this is how you're, you're literally walking with uh, the teaching. As you're seeing this, when you get your volume... That's what you're going to be seeing. That's how, it, that's how it progresses. And then you read those passages, let them speak to you, and then you go on to the next reading. Let's continue, Dave. Worship Jesus means to bend, worship means to bend the knee, which is an act of giving honor to another person. That's why some of us kneel when we pray. This offer of power would be a temptation to many people. Jesus, or Satan does have, does have the power to give Jesus the earth. However, Jesus knows that if he takes it this way, he will die spiritually and not be able to save us from our sins. Wow. He tells Satan, take a hike. Yeah, get behind me. What would Satan have to do to get you to choose popularity, fame, glamour, glory, or fortune over your relationship with God and other Christians? Wow. Next. The conclusion is this. Temptations come in through the eye from the world and only show the glitz and the glamour, not the degradation, the sorrow, and the death. They focus on this world and they hide God's glory. All sin. What's in the middle of sin? I. Mm. All sin is selfish. Wow. Come back to us, Dave. Again. It's hard to come up with a, I guess, an attractive way to cause you to want this kind of information in your life. But isn't it wonderful that in America, while we still have America left, while we still have freedom of religion, while we still can quote the Word of God and even read Scripture, that were the the politically correct people would never want you to read or to even mention the words that are in the Word of God. 
You can actually do that in America. We do that on mm -hmm. our program all the time. You couldn't do that on major networks. That's what this is going to do. It's going to put the Word of God inside of you and you will know that if someone else is teaching false doctrine, you will go, wait a minute, wait a minute. That's not what I just read. This drove you to the Word. Now you're reading the Word and you're going, that is not correct. I walk by programs all the time that are seen on screens in this, in this network that are being shown across our whole network. And I will stand there and I'll look at the screen and I'll go, where on earth did you get that from the Bible that I just read in my home early this morning? It isn't there. But see, man then takes the Word of God and perverts it. Okay. I want the undiluted, pure Word of God. That's what I want when I drink water. I don't want that water polluted because it's going to injure me. Do you know that watching, listening to, reading, allowing even... I don't know where you go to church, but even some of the ministers are letting information mm -hmm. from the pulpit settle into the hearts and lives of those people, and they go out of there without checking this with what they just heard. And if you don't do that, you then can be a part of that gospel, and when somebody says something to you that is correct, you go, well, no, no, my, my pastor... No, he, he, that isn't what he said. And the person talking to you could be quoting the Word of God and you're quoting the pastor. Let's get into the Word of God. Churches are wonderful, but make sure that pastor is teaching the pure Word of God. One minute less. Challenge the people right there on the, on the screen right now. Well, this is your opportunity to get into a Bible study that's going to change your life. You can get Walking with Jesus, Volume 1 at the... Walk, uh, Walk with Jesus website, that's www.wwj.bible. And we have Walking with Jesus Volume 1 on special $30. That's a, almost a 20% savings off the regular price right now. So you can go on, order your copy, order 10 or more copies, and we'll send a free teacher's IFA application CD with it that you can use to help you in your Bible study. Don't have to worry about preparation. Just sit down, open to that lesson, read through it together. There are discussion questions in there. Answer those discussion questions. Have some time of prayer, and your life will be changed as you're walking with Jesus. Glenn Koppel, thank you. Thank you. All the study this guy has put into that absolutely amazes me. But remember, today, Jesus Christ is the answer to every need you may have. Bye-bye. Thank you for watching It's Time. If you have recently made a decision for Christ, Herman and Sharon would like to hear from you.